So Welcome, Sean, to Glorious Glow Empowerment Channel. It's good to have Hallelujah. you here. <laughs> We're going to have a wonderful time of fellowship. Yes, we are. So can you tell us a bit about yourself, what you do, and what your passions are, where you live as well? Sure. Uh, my name is Sean Duvel, and I live in a small town in Bradenton, Florida. Florida. Most of you might know what Florida is because that's the home of Disney World. And yeah. uh, um, so that's a very uh, well-known tourist attraction spot. It is. And I, I live about two miles, two, uh, not two miles, two hours uh, from that time. From that. And uh, my passion is the Hebrew roots of the Christian faith. In fact, I'd like to show you uh, this one thing that I have. Torah, weapon of mass destruction. Wow. <laughs> Torah is funny because Torah means teaching and instruction in Hebrew. That's what it means. Okay. But most people understand Torah as the first five books of the Bible. Yes. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But if you take it in its literal sense, Torah, uh, Torah goes from Genesis all the way to Revelation, because all of that is God's teaching and instruction, right? Yes. Because all scripture is profitable, all good for doctrine, reproof, and edifying, right? Mm -hmm. So in its, in its, in its um, original sense, the Torah is the complete Bible, but most people know it as the first five books. It's, yeah, that's, you are right. So what I do on my channel, this channel is about empowering people and okay. ensuring, ensuring that their lives glorify God, you know, and encouraging them to follow their passions. Hallelujah. So tell us about your passion and how you discovered this. So um, back in 2000, I was attending this uh, church in locally church of the cross and there was uh there was a lady that was uh having a class during the week called the prophecy class okay and she was showing videos like um uh people like joan vancouver uh perry stone um god's news behind the news and stuff like that those are pretty popular here in the states at least they were then and uh, Perry Stone actually has a show on TV called Manifest. And yes, uh, I've seen that. Yeah. Seen that. yeah. So, um, so one of his good friends and um, researchers named Bill Cloud uh, would often appear and guest appear on, on Bill Cloud on uh, Perry Stone's uh, programming. And he would always be at the Prophecy Conference, which was usually held in Florida. Mm -hmm. Tampa, Tampa, Florida. But in, in any event, the, the woman who was uh, teaching these conferences, the, and, um, and then she started to explore the Hebrew roots of the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. And so she started sharing some of that with me, and it just witnessed to my soul just like that. Because, wow. You know, mm. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? Would you agree? Uh, I agree. Uh, grass fades, the flower withers, but the word of the Lord stands forever, right? Yes. And in the beginning was the what? No, was the, the word. And, right? the, word and the word was earth. with God, and the word was God. Yes. And the word became flesh. But did you know there's a parable of the sower where Jesus is going out with his disciples and he's teaching about these parables? One's about the parables of the sower that fell on different types of soil, soil and yes. the other one's about the sower of the wheat and the tares, mm -hmm. right? And Luke 11, he's talking about the sower, uh, the seed is the word of God, right? Yes. So if the seed is the word of God, right? And mm -hmm. the word of God, we know to be Jesus. Jesus, Yeshua, yes, right? yeah. There is a spiritual principle found in Genesis 1, mm -hmm. right? Talking about the seed shall produce after its kind. Kind, right? yes. And on day three, uh, which is funny because on day three, uh, there was no land, there was no vegetation, 
And just suddenly, out of nowhere, you could say from death, the land appeared and life began. Life, yeah. Right? So right in the very beginning of Genesis, we see the shadow and the pattern of resurrection, right? Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. came from nothing. Life came from death, right? Right out of Genesis 3. In the seed, and we know who the seed is, right? Because yeah. Genesis 3 goes on to talk about that that um, there's going to be enmity with God's seed and Hasatan's seed, right? And he shall bruise your heel, but he will crush your head, right? Head. Yeah. And so, uh, so the seed will produce after its kind. And it's funny because if you had a watermelon seed back in the days of uh, Adam and Eve, that yeah. seed would still be a watermelon, watermelon. seed today, yeah. right? <laughs> It's not yeah. going to be an orange seed. It's not going to be a pear seed or an apple seed, right? It's no. still going to be the same seed. So if the seed mm. in Hebrew says Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, yeah, and forever. forever. And the seed is the word, hello, are you picking this up? The wow. seed is not going to change because it no. does not change. Right? No, it doesn't. That's awesome. Uh, wow. So, um, so anyways... I started getting into that in, in about 2000. Um, but you know, in my life, I don't know if, uh, you, you had sent a bunch of questionnaires and I don't know if you wanted to go off on that or what did you, I'm good either way you want to go. Okay, okay. So you found your passion that way, but then so many things happen, has happened along the way. So can you just go back a bit, retrace your steps, you know, and yeah. tell us, when you first got to know God, mm, yes, okay, you know, and then what me. happened sure. along the way? So, all right, so I was a rebellious kid when I was younger, and my neighbors were uh, born again Christians, attended a, uh, I guess, um, they would be considered Pentecostal Church of God. They, they attended yeah. Church of God. And I was having this party, and I was out in the middle of the street, and I was hooping it up and cussing. And the name comes out with Sean. I am so disappointed in you. I got kids sleeping in the, and you know, I just, I mean, he convicted me. The Holy Spirit through his words just convicted me right there mm. on the spot. Mm. And uh, uh, so I went back in, turned down, and about, I don't know, I would say three to six weeks later, it's mm -hmm. been um, 50, and that was when I was 18. I go knocking on his door. He's like, yeah, hey, can I go to church with you? And Aww. his surprise was like, wow. So <laughs> the Lord had been pulling on my heart since then. Um, and so uh, not too long after that, you know, I was going to the church. I was worshiping for a couple of years, uh, but fell away, you know, backstory. Mm. Um, got in with the wrong crowd, experimented with drugs and alcohol, mm -hmm. uh, just went wayward. I mean, wayward in wow. the sense that I, I took a club, I uh, took a job in Arizona working at an adult club and, and, um, and then for three years did that and, and saw so much at first, it was, you know. Were you 18 at this point? Were you 18 years old at the time? No, now we're looking at 23, 25. 23, 25. okay. I was a black belt martial arts, so I did security work. Um, and, so I, and so in any event, I um, took this job and, and and I started going, fulfilling my own selfish desires, forgetting God, leaving him like a sheep, all mm -hmm. turned away. Um, even though I made a perusal, uh, confession of faith, which I believe was a seed that was implanted uh, in me. But I, I fell away and I experimented with drugs and alcohol. And I don't want to glorify that uh, no. in, in any sense. But it was a struggle. That, that struggle held on to me for 30 years, probably. Mm. 30 years, off and on, off and on, off and on. But the God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob never let me go. Mm -hmm. Never stopped uh, pursuing me, uh, mm -hmm. allowing me to suffer consequences that I, I deserved. 
Actually, yeah. I deserve the consequences. But yeah. it, uh, it took a long time to help me get out of the state of denial. Mm. That, you know, and, and take ownership and responsibility. It was always somebody else's fault. It was always, yeah. you know, mm. it was always, uh, it was, you know, because of my wife and my ex-wife. Mm. It was because of my this. It was because of my daughter. It was because of X, Y, Z. Yeah. But never Shawnee D, if you will. You know, it was always because of somebody else and what somebody else did. And then in 2006, I went to a place called Dunklin Memorial Camp which mm -hmm. is a faith-based um, recovery center. Mm -hmm. And this place is a 10-month program where, um, where you don't have any phones, you don't have any newspapers, you don't have any TV, mm -hmm. and it's, it, you work in this environment. They do what's called sociograms. Are you familiar with what that, might, that is? Sociograms. Yeah. It's really interesting. Can Only you explain? explain Wait, before you explain social grams, can I take you a back a bit, just a little bit? Go ahead. Yes, yeah, so you were 18, got into drugs and all that. But before then, you went to church, right? Well, you when I was 18, God. I went to church. Yeah. And then around 23, 24, 25, in that area is when I started experimenting with drugs and alcohol. Okay. So having known for some time and then falling into drugs and alcohol yeah what happened what could have caused that do you know um well <laughs> i think it was because of the normal male um hormones where i was chasing love probably mm. and i was looking for love in all the wrong places right and so, so that, in that instance, I mean, you can attribute, if you want to go back, you can attribute it to uh, my, my, fam my family life when I was growing up. Right. I, I have five brothers and three sisters. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my, my, my younger brother, God rest his soul, um, um, and I were the only ones that had the same father and mother. Right. Okay. All my other brothers and sisters, we either had the same father or the same mother. Right. So, um, what Dunklin actually taught me is that I was competing for attention with all mm. these other, with all these uh, other uh, siblings. Right. And then, um, and then, so I was always trying to. My self worth was always trying to be good enough. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but because of a fractured relationship with my father, mm -hmm. uh, it, it never really solidified to be a healthy um, relationship. Relationship, yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't abusive uh, in, in a sense. I mean, unless you call time, emotional neglect, or you know, mm -hmm. but it wasn't any kind of that abusive. Is, in fact, I had a pretty good life as a kid. Uh, mm. We had um, we grew up in a, a rural neighborhood in okay. a small town in New Hampshire. Uh, we had a, one of the few homes that had a pool. Mm. Um, but my parents wow. weren't. <laughs> I know we weren't rich by any means. Uh, they struggled to meet the bills, and they, my mother worked two jobs. You okay. Know, they, my father was a carpenter. Mm. For the city, Were you a Christian so. family? Did you go to church as a family? No, we did not. I was okay. not raised as a Christian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I was not raised as a Christian. So I still had a lot of the worldly pull mm -hmm. uh, in my life. And it just took a long time to knock that pull up. Right. And, uh, um, so, so then, you know, going, you know, maybe this church thing is new. Maybe it's like the, uh, the seed that uh, first hears the word and springs up with joy, but the cares and the, this world, Cares you know, of the world, yeah, choke it out, you know. Mm -hmm, and so I just mm -hmm. went, I went back into the south, you know, going back to my old ways. And plus, mm -hmm. you know, growing up non Christian, I had best friends to this day two best friends that uh, were not Christians, but I am. That was yeah. another struggle as a Christian, 
you know, they were like, Sean, what are you doing? I, are we going to hell now? Is that what it is? You know, <laughs> are you judging us me, now? <laughs> so yeah. faith, you know, not knowing the word and not understanding things, but that's the beauty of the spirit. You know what I mean? That's, mm. that's, what, that's what God did when he took Israel out of Egypt. Each, you yeah. know, he saved them first and then brought them to Mount Sinai mm -hmm. to give them the teachings and instructions where they said, all we have heard, we will do, right? Yeah. That, isn't that what we do? When I'm a mire and we're like, Lord, save me. Jesus, save me. I, I surrender to your... Uh, your will. To your will. Yeah. All you say, I will do. Not even knowing what's... What's ahead. that stick? <laughs> what? What? You mean I can't? I can't do that. What? <laughs> what? No. So, so that... You know, so that's how I grew up. That's then. That's when I got convicted at 18, not being churched. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Not being growing up in church. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you call going walking to uh, catechism school for the Catholics. Yeah. Uh, uphill in the snow, barefoot, both ways. You know, really? No, no. It's a it's a saying that we say in, in <laughs> New England because. The weather's usually cold. It snows a lot. And our parents would give us these sob stories like, when I was your age, I would go to church in the snow with, with oh, no right. shoes on. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's an, a very interesting story. So at 18, you got to know God and everything, but you still went, you know, south got into drugs and all of that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So at what stage did you re realize that you had to give up those drugs? Well, it was actually a constant struggle through uh, all the way up to 2018. Mm -hmm. um, in 2018, I wasn't doing drugs, but I was still drinking. I was still, still in drinking. denial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was still drinking. I was still in denial. And uh, I got a DUI. I'm not proud of that. Not, you know, a DUI here is uh, drinking under the influence. Influence, driving yeah. Influence. Driving, yeah. Driving under the influence. So it was really a wake-up call, not just for me, but also for my wife. You know what I'm saying? Be, you know, at first we thought, hey, yeah, you can't have one or two here. It's not. Mm. But that one or two became, there's a saying in the uh, rooms of NA and A, so it's one is too many and a thousand is never enough. So, so that's my that's my story. One is too many, a thousand is not enough. Mm. Just, once I start, I don't have the ability to stop. To stop, you know, uh, where my wife can have one glass of wine and be fine with it. You mm -hmm. know? In fact, she can have she can pour herself a glass of wine, and it cannot be finished. <laughs> you know, where <laughs> I would have to, I would be like, what? That that wasn't my story. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got a DUI, and the funny thing is, I was. When I got into the Hebrew roots of the Christian faith, it caused even more of a divide because mm. it was going upstream to mainstream Christianity. Mm -hmm. um, it had challenged some of the, it challenged some of its <clears throat> foundational um, practices mm -hmm. and started getting back to the Hebrew roots of the Christian faith and what the apostles did in the first century. Yeah. And so I would, you know, my pastor, my church members, uh, people I would go with, it, it, they were, not that they had to embrace it, but they almost pushed me out, if you will. Oh. Um, yeah. They almost pushed me out. Um, it created a very decisive wedge in my marriage. But I still had a lot of those characteristics in me. Coupled and then fuel the fire with some new revelation, new understanding, and then miss interpreting old understandings uh, of what the Bible means when it says Me, that the yeah. husband's the head of the wife, and, you know, have mm. those old legacy. You will do what I say. Submit. Go in this direction. <laughs> yeah. It, it was. You know, it was, uh, it was a perfect storm, if you will. It was a mm -hmm. natural, natural cause of, of uh, woes and disasters. And it was, 
And so for the next 18 years, I would struggle with finding again my, my need for attention, if you will, my spot in the place where going back to my dad and mm -hmm. that I had to fight for the attention where I knew what I understood was from God in the spirit yeah. and, and right in the word, but nobody else knew it. I felt alone in the, in the desert. Yeah. So, yeah so there seems to be a pattern here so having come out of that you know before you came out what helped you did you have a community of um, people at church what yeah, actually exactly. helped you because parents listening to this or anyone going through this would want to know how someone who knew jesus fell into that and then sure. how you came out of it who helped yeah, you yeah so uh i can't let me up here let's see well i was hoping this would let me put up my virtual background but i guess not for whatever reason oh your background is fine i like that yeah but i was going to show you a picture of uh some of the guys that um that i uh oh well anyways oh mm. okay i guess i'll take that. so anyways i apologize for that so I, no it's all right um, I have a picture of some of the guys that I was going to this Bible study, right? Since 2012 at, at a local coffee shop. I don't know if I can name your name. If you're going to put this on YouTube or whatnot. Yeah. Uh, but but um, it was a local, well known coffee shop. Uh, I don't want to say it had stars in the sky, but you could understand it. <laughs> yeah, I know what you right? Yeah. So, so uh, it's funny because I went in there. And I was going to get coffee, and then I see this bunch of men, pretty much about eight, eight, about six to, to eight men that were sitting in the middle of Starbucks having a Bible study, discussing the Bible. Really? Uh, That's we're at good. We're a general age between 50 and 87, right? And so they were mature men who've been through life and weathered and uh, really. Like, uh, it was, now I look back on it, it was a great fertile ground that God planted me in for a mentor to be yeah. mentored. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and so I started, I met them in 2012, and I saw them and said, Hey, you having a Bible study? I'm like, yeah. I said, Well, do you mind if I join you? <laughs> and they're like, Oh, okay. So I partake in Bible study. Now, for the first <laughs> four or five years, I would go. Uh, when I could, depending on what my job allowed me yeah. to do, and it was usually maybe no more than four or five times a year. Mm. Uh, then in about 2017, I was pretty consistent every Friday morning, we all meet okay. there. Mm. Um, but I was still drinking. Mm. I was still drinking. 2018 is when I got my DUI. Mm. And then I got it on a Thursday. I got it on a Sunday. No, it was April. April. It was April eleventh, actually, when I when I uh, got the DUI mm -hmm. of two thousand eighteen. So when I went back to the Bible study, um, they already knew because the table next door was uh, sat the what here we um, we have a. Uh, democratic system of Republicans and Democrats on the rules. So it was right. most of the people of the Republican Party, a, a group of guys from the Republican Party would come in at the same time that we did and um, and then they would sit in the table next door and talk about their stuff. And one of them right. was a lawyer. So he okay. said, hey, isn't this the guy that comes to your Bible study? <laughs> so they, <laughs> really? they already knew but I had told them uh, with the, my head hanging low, full of guilt and shame. Um, and then they just came up alongside me. You know, they nurtured me. Uh, mm. They spoke into my life. They uh, held me accountable. Yeah. Um, and so really started the restoration. He's like, Sean, you know, we all fall. We all have our faults. We just mm -hmm. got to get back mm -hmm. our horse and, and uh, continue to walk in. So I actually had to be on house arrest for four months. So I couldn't go to Starbucks. 
Mm. So they came to my house. Oh. They came, all of them came to my house for four months on Fridays to, uh, to continue the Bible study. Bible study. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So, I love your story. It shows the importance of mentorship, spiritual mentorship. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And it also shows that God welcomes us just as we are. That's you don't right. have to go clean yourself up first. Come on. You know, and say, oh, I can't go to church. I'm a sinner. I'm too deep in sin. Mm. You know, as deep as you are, he wants you to come submit yourself to him. You yeah. know, because that's what the devil wants. He wants to keep you in a corner thinking yes. you are the worst sinner. Come on. Know? And he wants to hold you there and keep as many people there. You know, but Jesus yeah. has already won the prize by dying for us and shedding his blood. He has cleaned, he has clean, cleaned us all. We are holy. He is holy. Yes. So we are holy. Yes. We are righteous. So we are righteous. Yes. The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All he wants is for holy. Lord, here I am. Right? Mm -hmm. You know? Wonderful. All of you, the good and the bad. The good and the bad. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And one thing I have realized is that when you are filled with condemnation, shame, guilt, and all of that, your glory will not be seen by others. Mm -hmm. That's right. Somebody out there is waiting for you to walk in your glory, right? That's right. And that will help them come into their own glory. Yeah. You know? You're breaking up a little bit here, but yeah. Oh, when someone sees you walking in your glory, Mm -hmm. That will help them come into their own glory as well. Did you yeah. get that? Seed. Yeah. yeah. When so someone the seed. sees you walking in the glory that God is giving you, that will help them come into their glory as well. Yeah. I think the scripture says that we have to comfort those in the comfort in which we've been comforted with. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. It definitely... When they see that and they see that hope and they see that light and they see that shine, even among, even amidst all the trials and tribulations, the failures and the disappointments, the regrets yeah. and, the, and the shame, you can walk out and you have that cloth of righteousness. I'm, mm -hmm. I hear you. Absolutely. You can, walk mm -hmm. in, you, you can walk in joy. You can walk in peace. And you, you can hold your head up knowing that it's not my righteousness that redeems me, it's but not. the Lord on high. Who paid it all. Definitely, past, of course. <laughs> present and future. Yeah, yeah. So what I see in your story is that the man in the, in the coffee shop in Starbucks, that was a divine setup. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know? I agree. Yeah, it was a divine setup. God was with you all the way. He, ne he never left you. Amen. You know, never he never left, left you. So tell us how you came into studying Jewish roots. So uh, back in, you know, there's a lot because of time, you know, uh, yeah. and go through everything. But back in 2000, I was married uh, to my first wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, I only have two. No, that's <laughs> my first, my current, my yeah. first wife. And no uh, judging. Don't worry. We're not judging anyone. <laughs> Well, viewers may want to know, but um, <laughs> so the and I appreciate that. Thank you. That's My, all right. Uh, I, we were married, and the pastor asked me to host a young adult group at that mm -hmm. point. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'd be happy to. So um, we were having it, uh, Bible studies at our home with young adults, and then it was around the time of Passover. And it was, I was curious as to what was going on. And my friend D, who I was telling you about the prophecy box, yeah. was speaking a little bit about this thing called the Hebrew roots or the Messianic uh, movement of the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. And so um, I called up local synagogues to see if they'd come and share Passover as they understood it mm -hmm. to a Christian group. And right. no one wanted to do it. So I kept on persisting and I got one synagogue that came over to do it. 
Mm. And wow, unbelievable. It just, um, this, they happened to be a Messianic synagogue, mm -hmm. which was just, it blew me away, the significance of how the Hebrew roots actually show us the mm -hmm. life, death, resurrection, and the second coming, and the bride of Christ, uh, and the marriage supper of the Lamb, and all the things that we see in the Bible, we don't understand because we think of it over here from a Western mindset. Mm -hmm. We don't see it from a Hebraic mindset. Right. In other words, Hebrew has idioms like American, like English has idioms. You know, it's raining cats and dogs. He's driving like a bat out of the each double boxes. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I got a frog in my throat. You know, those are all idioms we have. But Hebrew has the same idioms implanted in the word that we gloss over. Really? We don't, I can, I can, we don't recognize those idioms. So when he was teaching us about Passover, he came to, um, he came to a, the part called, uh, the, in the Passover Seder, about the unleavened bread. Now, this unleavened bread, have you ever seen matzah before? No. Matzah is, is bread that's baked, that's dry. It's mm. uh, poked with holes, and it's, when it's baked, it has stripes on it, right? Really? I yeah, haven't seen that this, before. <laughs> I might have some here. Let me see if I can okay. walk over to my kitchen here. Mm -hmm. It'd be see nice to see some. There we go. I got my little uh, my little plaque here. It says Yod Hey Vav Hey. Oh wow! What does that mean? Uh, that's Yahweh in Hebrew. Okay. I don't anywhere in our matzah bread. Too bad. No. Okay. I thought I might have had some of them from Passover, but I don't. Oh, you don't. Maybe I'll not. check YouTube later to see or Google something. <laughs> yeah, you can Google it. Yeah. And uh, basically, Mark's, when you look at it, uh, it would have been nice to have it. I could have shown you again, I guess. But this matzo bread, mm -hmm. Jesus says, I am the bread of life, right? Yeah. This matzo bread that's striped and pierced and bruised is put into this uh, what they call uh, uh, a matzah tosh or a, a unity bag. And this unity bag has three compartments. Okay. And you put three pieces of bread into the compartment. And you take the middle piece out of the compartment mm -hmm. and you break it. Mm -hmm. And then you take the broken piece and you wrap it in linen. Hello, somebody. Mm. You hide it so that, so that the children have to go find it. Right? Oh, and you okay. hide it you hang it usually, usually under a pillow, which in Hebrew they call stone, right? Mm. And then when they remove the stone and they find this matzo bread, they mm -hmm. have, and it gets unwrapped, they get a reward. Well, just wow. like Jesus was broken and bruised and pierced for our transgressions, mm -hmm. he died and he was wrapped in a linen. He was put into a tomb where mm. the stone was rolled away. And when wow. the disciples went to go find it, they received a reward of joy unspeakable. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. So when the child brings that, brings that matzah back to the father, he negotiates the father a price to be paid for that. And the father will go, okay, here, I'm going to give you this dollar or five dollars with the promise that there's more to come later. Wow. Well, when Jesus, Jesus came to us, he said, hey, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit with the promise, hello, somebody, there's yeah. more to come later, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in Passover, which is unique because Jesus is the Lamb of God. He is, who yeah. died on Passover. He was in the grave during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Mm -hmm. He rose on the Feast so of first fruits. Mm -hmm. He was with his disciples for 40 days and 40 nights, speaking to them, about the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And then said, wait here for the promise. Yeah. And then on Pentecost, which is also called in Hebrew, the feast of Shavuot, the Holy Spirit descended upon the same day 
that the Torah was given on Mount Sinai, when thundering and lightning and fire was on Mount Sinai, tongues of fire, clothing fires was on top of the disciples. Hello, somebody. Mm. Right? And then, so if the, if, the, if the first four feasts talk about the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the giving of the Holy Spirit, we still got the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Feast of Trumpets, I heard something in the Bible saying he's going to come with a great shout, like the last trump, hello, right? Yeah. And then five days later, the, 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 uh, the Day of Atonement, if you're saved, or the Day of Judgment, if you're not, right? Mm -hmm, it's coming. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, then seven, and then seven days later, you have the Feast of Tabernacles, or as, as it's called, the wedding celebration. Hello. Yeah. Mm -hmm, Who's mm -hmm. Christ coming for? He's coming for a bride. Right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's so good to see the comparison, you know? It's yeah. good to see that. I've, not everyone know, has that knowledge, and I'm happy to see the passion you have about it as well. Oh, love it. I love it. And it's just, you know, since being clean, being set free, it's even more the fire is like shut up in my bones where, mm. you know, I don't know if it's because I feel like I have to make up for past, uh, lost past time, time, <laughs> lost time. Uh, or if I still get something to prove, which I know mentally I don't, you know, I you know Christ yeah. did it all, mm -hmm. but perhaps more out of gratefulness. Out yes. of, yeah. unbelievable thankfulness that Yahweh had saved me from continuing on that path mm -hmm. uh, of hell and destruction and, um, and, and if, you know at least hell in this lifetime mm -hmm. but um, destruction for sure heartache uh, broken relationships all that comes with sin that you know sin comes to, as a wrong line to kill steal and destroy yeah yeah don't worry but, that was your process we all have a process you know right. that's leading us somewhere that was your process so now you get to talk to other people that, that have been have been there as well or that are going through that as well so there's yeah. nothing to to maybe feel bad about you have been well, thank you yeah I appreciate that thank you so yeah. glory uh are you Training to be a counselor, or um, is this just some off the subject that you decided to talk about off the top? No, no, I'm not training to be a counselor. I am a secondary school teacher here in the UK, uh -huh. and I also studied psychology. Okay. Yeah. So what I do is I coach women, you know, women, and I empower them to overcome various limitations, oh, yeah. limiting beliefs, and things like that. And I help them, encourage them to own who they are, you know, to understand their God's given identity Amen. and work in their purpose. So that's what I do. So I love to interview people who have overcome. So everyone watching would see that if you can do it, then they can as well. Amen. Amen. It's been done before, it can be done again. Yes, right. definitely. So it's been great having you here with me, Sean. Thank you, Glory, for allowing me to share uh, a little bit of the testimony. Mm -hmm. What I, I would really like you to it. do now, if, you, if you'd like, is please encourage parents out there or any teenager who may be watching or listening, okay, to this broadcast now. All right, children, stay away from drugs. No, because... <laughs> yeah. They don't do anything productive. Uh, it may be feel good, temporary. Um, may seem like it's joyful, but it's a hook that only leads to, uh, like I said before, death and destruction. Jails, institutions, and death. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go down that road. But if you're in that road, and you know God has been tugging on your heart, and you've been hearing His voice but you're chained in the flesh. You're chained in your addiction. There is hope for you. Amen. Listen, I promise you, I promise you, it's better on the other side. 
And that if you will just call out to God, he says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Hallelujah. It is Amen. true. Mm. And it can be true for you. If you are struggling right now, surround yourself with people who are passionate for the Lord. Not mm. somebody who just goes to church. Because mm -hmm. you want somebody who is passionate and on fire and will talk to you daily about the things of God. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. like, like, like Lori said, you don't have to get cleaned up first in order to get saved, in order to get, get set free. Mm -hmm. Nobody washes their feet before they take a bath. Hello? <laughs> no. <laughs> so right? true. Jesus is your bath. You don't need to worry about washing your feet. Yeshua will cleanse you from Amen. the inside out, mm -hmm. from the top to the bottom. Mm -hmm. He will cleanse every single part of you. You just have to grab hold, get into a body of believers, but most importantly, desire to know him. Mm -hmm. And the word says, how can a young man cleanse his way? Mm -hmm. By the washing of the word. Mm -hmm. In Psalms 1, right? So Psalms 1 says that. So I encourage you to grab hold of God. I encourage you to get with a group of like-minded believers who are passionate about, mm -hmm. about the Lord. I encourage you to fill your mind with edifying things such as uh, things on YouTube. I love watching Ray Comfort. He's an evangelist okay. uh, who shares how to preach the word. Um, mm. and, and you have to give it away. You can't just keep it in. No. Share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with your co workers, share it with strangers. Mm -hmm. And then I love Todd White as well. Sorry, what's that? I love Todd White as well on YouTube. Todd White, I haven't yeah. heard of him. I'm gonna break that down. Todd White, yeah. So good. Well, when you when you find there is something in, in God's plan for you. Because he created you for a purpose. He says yes. to the Israelites when they were struggling, when they were going into captivity, mm. he says, hey, listen, my thoughts for you uh, are thoughts of good, not mm -hmm. of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Mm -hmm. Right now you may be struggling, but there is a future and a hope. Uh, and if, if you just trust him, I promise you, from experience, you can be set free. Mm. You can walk in freedom. You can be, um, mm. you, you can live life with joy and speakable. Yeah. And you don't have to go off the, the big things. You don't have to have your name in lights because if you're faithful with the small things, you'll be faithful with the, with the big things. And let me tell you something. This, there's nothing on this earth that you go through for God that will not be worth it. Because Jesus said, for the joy set, set before him. Mm -hmm. You gotta think, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Mm. Think about how much joy that had to be. Mm -hmm. Think about, well, I'm gonna go through this torture, but you know what? There's gonna be joy on the other side that's gonna motivate me to suffer like that. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. that joy was? It was you. You were that joy. Hallelujah. Said, That's good. <laughs> yes. He wanted you. He said, I'm going to do this for Sean. Mm. I'm going to do this for Glory. Mm. I'm going to do this for Tom. I'm mm. doing it for you because I love you. Yes. Mm. He That's loves awesome. you that much. Mm. Wow. That's powerful. <laughs> Amen. So listen. So whatever you're going through right now, I want to encourage you just to say a prayer to, you know, it's not mandated in the Bible that you have a certain set prayer to reach out to God. You just have to say, Lord, I, I need you. Mm -hmm. I am a mm -hmm. sinner. Mm -hmm. I have made mistakes. And sin just means missing the mark. You know, yep. 1 John 2, 6 says sin is a law. Sin is lawlessness. The, the Torah teaches us what sin is. The law teaches us what sin is, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have to tell you that whatever struggle you may be in, in fact, I have many friends who are in the uh, LGBT community mm -hmm. and 
and I talk to them and they, they always get up, hung up on their lifestyle. I said, let's take that out. Let's take the lifestyle out for a second. Mm. Are you a good person? Well, I believe I am. Okay. Mm. Have you ever challenged that? Well, what do you mean? Well, let's see if you're a good person. All right. Have you ever lied? <laughs> yeah, you have. Okay. What does that make you? A liar. Very good. Okay. <laughs> so have you ever stole anything? No matter irrelevant of its worth, paper clip, uh, mm-hmm. you know, paper from school, uh, pencil yeah. from work. You yeah. Know, have you ever stolen anything? Mm-hmm. Okay. So what, is, what do you call somebody who steals? And they use a thief. A thief, <laughs> right. And what does that make you? A thief. <laughs> no, it makes you a lying thief. Hello, a lying sorry. thief, okay. <laughs> right. right. Have, you ever, uh, have you ever used God's name in vain? Mm. Right? And there's some very serious uh, consequences, blasphemy mm. in the Bible. Mm. Uh, have you ever... Um, have you ever disrespected your parents? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you have. Okay. Um, so, no, I'm not judging you, but from your own words, you told me that you're a lying, thieving, <laughs> blasphemer, rebellious son or daughter <laughs> at heart. And those are just four of the Ten Commandments. And if you were to stand before God right now, and in, <laughs> uh, based on those four commandments out of ten, would you be innocent or guilty? <laughs> mm-hmm. and then they, like, so it has nothing to do with your lifestyle, lifestyle right now right we didn't talk about that mm-hmm. we just mm-hmm. talked about these four things so let's talk about how we can correct that how mm-hmm. we can how see you're just like me i'm a sinner just like you i've done those four things mm-hmm. right uh the other one i usually use is if you ever looked at a person with lust okay mm-hmm. so so you're a lying thieving adultery uh, of uh, adultery, blasphemy at heart is mm-hmm. what I used to go with. And then they say, well, you've done these four things that uh, you said you know you'd be guilty of. Do you know what happens? Do you know, do you, do you know how we can solve this situation? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I present the gospel to them. Oh, that's and good. Then I, yeah. That's mm-hmm. not me. That's Ray Comfort. He teaches mm-hmm. that. And, wow. Uh, that's so Ray, much wisdom. Ray, so it much really wisdom is, there. It really is great to be able to understand and share the word. Um, wow. Mm. With, a, with an unbeliever or somebody who's trying to use their lifestyle as a way to squirt them out of, you know, hearing the gospel. You just mm-hmm. take that out of the picture. It has yeah. nothing to do with the lifestyle. It mm-hmm. has everything to do with your relationship with the living, breathing creator who created mm. you for with a plan and a purpose. Mm, so good thank you so much before i let you go you mentioned social gram what is that <laughs> oh yes oh this was awesome so social gram so i was in this rebuild of uh faith-based uh, re- rehabilitation for drugs and alcohol it took, called dunklin memorial uh, mm-hmm. dunklin memorial camp okay DC. Or center. They would put tables, eight foot tables, and arrange them in a horseshoe fashion. Right. Right. And in the middle of a horseshoe fashion was a stool. Right. So mm. you had picture this eight feet. You had about twenty people sitting on all sides, right, okay. in a U shape. Mm-hmm. Right? So you had. You every every Monday at the social ground, you had six votes you had to cast: three good votes and three negative votes. If you right. Know, mm-hmm. About somebody's character, right? Mm. Now keep in mind these are people you worked with, um, people you um, did small groups with, people you might have done recreational sports or. Uh, whatever with yeah. you were there twenty four seven with these people. In mm-hmm. other words, right? Mm-hmm. They knew your uh, character. Character, <laughs> right? Yeah. So the social gram, one person can get fifteen or sixteen negative comments about one character defect. Like mine would be 
why is it opposed to this sarcasm, right? Mm, right. Sarcastic sometimes. Yeah. Right? So, when, you know, or pride, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. right? Or selfishness, self centeredness. Yeah. Or, you know, you have all these things you can, you can, um, and I still have the sociogram sheet that I can send to you if you like. Okay. You know. That would be uh, nice. Yeah. So, when you have, it's one thing if somebody says, Sean, you look pretty selfish out there, or Sean, you look pretty prideful there, uh, or Sean, you look pretty, uh, you know, um, greedy or greedy. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's still morning, I'm still not awake. I, 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 okay. so, <laughs> so, when they, um, when they say, um, uh, when they grant you on the same 15 people grant you on the same character defect, mm. it's like, wow, I an eye opener. That. You can excuse it when one or two people say, Nah, it's just the way you think. But when 15, 15. people tell you you have this character defect and you're in complete denial, it's like you, you're, you're like in the seat, kind of like blown away mm. by this revelation that you really don't want to hear but you yeah. need to. Mm. Mm. Right? Mm. So, um, wow. so anyways, it really opened my eyes to a lot of things that I was doing that I didn't realize I was doing. Mm. And then it, it taught me the number one thing and that thing is to receive. The ability to receive. Yes. Mm. Most people do not know how to receive. But for instance, let me give you a scenario. Mm -hmm. You're walking down the street and people keep, keep kicking you as you in, in your back and in your butt as you uh, continue to walk down the street. And you're like, what the heck? Why are they? Yeah. And you get to this one person, brother, hey, brother, listen, I love you. I want you to know that the reason this is happening is you get this big kick me sign on your back. Oh. And then you can take it up. Oh, great. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Hey, scenario number two, you're walking down and you get kicked in the head and kicked and some guy comes up to you and goes, what are you doing, idiot? You're so yeah. stupid. You get this kick me sign on your back. What are you, you like being kicked? What are you, dumb? You're so dumb. You get that kick me sign off of you. You're an idiot. Right? Mm. Which one did it the right way? The first one. They both did it the right way. Really? They oh. both told you you had the a truth. kicking sign on <laughs> your back. The, the, th the truth, the thing is, could you receive it? Mm. You could receive it one way, but when a guy said the truth another way, were you able to receive it? Right. Probably not. Mm. So Doug taught me that no matter how the truth comes, no matter how I hear it, just to be able to say, wait a minute, Thank you. Let me take a look at that. Yeah. Then you can evaluate, is it true? Or mm. is it from, you know, their perspective? Mm. If it's true and you have the ability to receive, you can take that kick me sign, no matter how they say it, off your back. Mm -hmm. You can take that pride off your oh, back. You can take that yeah. selfishness mm. off your back. And you don't have to suffer those consequences or continue that suffering. Because you were not able to receive. Wow, that's a Holy Spirit moment there. I feel that. Oh my God! <laughs> so good. <laughs> Do you know what? We could go on and on. This is a very good, you know, it's know, very good. But thank you so much, Sean. I've enjoyed having this interview with you today. It's been a pleasure and glory. It was such a pleasure to be a guest speaker. Uh, next time we talk, I'll have to know more about you. I know this is your interview, but yeah. sometime in the road, I'm going to ask you to interview on my show. Uh, I would love point. to come. I would love to be on your show. Why not? Yes. Absolutely. Less of me, more, more of him. Hallelujah. Yes, more of him. More of him. So mm -hmm. true. Thank you so much. And send me the link, please. My email. Yeah, in the link to this when you post this. Or oh, yeah, what, I will. I, whatever you're going to use it for. Because if you don't mind, I'd like to use it on my YouTube channel as well. Definitely. I'll share it with you so you can share okay. on your YouTube channel. Yeah? Excellent. All right, then. God bless. Thank you so God much. Bless.
Enjoy the rest of your day. You as well. All right, then. Bye.